Why blueberry? Yeah, why not raspberry? <sighs> I mean, like, I get like, do you prefer blueberries over raspberries? I personally do, not why we picked the name. And as of last week, I think we dropped the social. Okay. So we're going with just blueberries. So big mm. news here. Um, the TLDR on blueberry is we were looking for fruits and we were looking for something that had like fruit name, uh, social.com available. Uh, we found blueberry, blueberrysocial.com that was available. And we noticed blueberry.ai and then blueberry.com were both available for sale. So uh, we could eventually get those domains. And so we were like, all right, we're pretty set on blueberry. And then we went and we tried to create a mascot. And so um, I actually have it on the back of my sweatshirt, which I can show you, but we created a mascot. His name is Blue. And uh, we fell in love with Blue. And so after that, we were like, we got to go with Blueberry Social. So that's how we got to. Okay, so it's not even a love for the fruit, more so smart, but okay, strawberries or blueberries? I like blueberries. So yeah. honestly, it worked out. So it worked out, out it worked I guess. Out yeah. yeah, I guess. Unintentionally, but. Uh, Cause I that's what we were talking about. We're like, is he, are they strawberry, blueberry people? They pick blueberries. Like we, I, I mean, I think it helped that we both like yeah. blueberries, but uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. I, exactly. I would love to know a little bit about like your background. Like we obviously will talk about blueberry, but mm -hmm. like, how did you get your start? Like, what is like, who are you? Yeah. Okay, great question. I'll start like, I guess I'll go, go way back. So I grew up in Pennsylvania, um, went to college at, at Penn State. So, you know, a few like a few hours away from my, my home. And then and in 2020, I moved out to the Bay Area where I've been ever since. So I've been programming for, you know, nine, 10 years at this point, have worked at a few different early stage startups. Uh, when I first moved out here in 2020, I worked for one called Opener, which is now called like Pivotal Arrow. So, in aerospace, and then after that, worked for another startup called Cardless uh, in San Francisco. That drew me to like, I mean, I've always wanted to kind of start my own company and I've always felt, you know, very interested in trying to build from zero to one. It's what I did at most of my jobs. Um, and then, so this is back in 2024, when AI was first starting to boom, I was like, I will regret it if I don't go and, and try to build something. So I left my job in 2024, a lot of, been a, been a journey since then on multiple products, multiple different things, but all of that has led me to Blueberry today, which I'm really excited about. I love that. So what is Blueberry other than a subpar fruit in my opinion? <laughs> we got a Blueberry hater here. Well, hopefully you're a fruit hater, not but a But you know what, hater. I will say yeah. the the visuals and aesthetic of the brand are pretty nice, so I'll give you that. Thank you. We got a, we got a big brand refresh coming in like two days yeah. uh, that we've been working with a, like a design firm on, which we're really excited about um, but blueberry in itself is we call it a one-to-one -one marketer for b2c brands so that means we personally market to anyone who's engaging with a brands on social okay so run like run like an example flow so like i see an image of a brand like something and then i comment like what like what does blueberry do yeah this is a great example so let's take a brand all say gap right gap might have five million followers our thesis is impossible to know every single one of those 5 million followers, what they like, who they are, what they care about, and give them personalized offers. And so what people do today is they do mass marketing. So they do like blasts yeah. to all their people. Our goal with Blueberry is to turn that into like personalized one-to-one -one marketing for each of those people. So as an example, uh, I'll, I'll take your comment an example. Let's say you go and comment on a post from Gap or an ad or a post, whatever it is. Blueberry will then click into your profile, like look at all of your, your bio, watch your videos, look at your photos, and start to understand who you are as a customer, and then can send you a personalized message, either to just say like, hey, thanks for being a fan of the brand, or to figure out like, you know what, you might really like shoes, let's give you a, a discount code or an offer for shoes. And so we do that across all of the people engaging with the brand. That's actually pretty sweet, so, like you're, you, I'm assuming you're using AI, to yep. you scrape all the information, pass it to AI, build a profile, and then that is used to generate personalized messages. Exactly. That's there's two parts of this. Like one, we hook into the brand social accounts. So we're an approved like. Oh, meta so partner. it's auto like. Yeah. Oh, so I thought you were like just giving them messages and someone would have to type it. No, out. no, no. We can do it automatically because we'll. What brands do is they come to us. They can link their Facebook, their Instagram accounts. Those are two main platforms we work on today, and then we detect every interaction automatically. So we know when someone comments, we know when someone reacts to a story, we know when someone likes an ad. Now we can take that and then automatically go to this person's profile, do some research about them, and then automatically kick off like, whether it's comment replies, DM campaigns, or just build up this really comprehensive database of who every customer is that's interacting with a brand. 
who's the marketer out of you and the co-founder? Because this is like a like a specific pain point that a lot of people, a lot of businesses have, but you don't really hear about unless you're in the game. So like whose idea was this? Yeah, the beautiful thing is this actually came from a combination of things from my co-founder and I. So my co-founder back in the day, uh, he worked at Snapchat and then also co-founded a marketing company that won like three Can Lions, which are pretty big like marketing awards. I spent like the past year plus building like AI social media agents. So helping brands drive customers via social media. I was focused on content creation then, uh, but the switch that we both realized is like brands spend a lot of money on making really good content. So how do we supercharge that and make everyone that's already engaging with this content go much further? So we see ourselves not as like a content replacer, but supercharging that engagement. So I came from it from this like AI social lens. My co-founder has been at Snapchat, worked in marketing, like co-founded a marketing agency before. And together we kind of like pieced together these pain points to understand. And honestly, like it's also just talking to our customers. <laughs> like this is, I, we, we, we came with a pretty simple workflow where we just would help respond, help customers respond to comments. But at the end of the day, like when you work with customers pretty closely, you start to see their pain points and you start to guide towards solutions with them. There's been probably two key pieces that I would say like customers find really like, like they're like, oh, it's a wow moment for them. Um, one is it's probably 15 seconds to go and have them link their accounts. And then we start pulling historical comments from them. And what we're actually doing is we're not training our own model on these comments, but we have them as reference. And so like as a new comment comes in, if we see a brand already answered a similar comment in this way, we already know how to respond, we already know their brand voice, we already know their tone. So the big wow moment is like, we can go from like 15 seconds of setup with them linking their accounts, have someone, like someone will go leave a comment and they'll already get like a suggested reply that's like in the brand voice, according to their knowledge base, according to their guidelines with like zero effort. So we get them to that like wow moment really quickly. Um, and for a lot of people, it's, it's um, you know, they don't, they don't have as much experience with these AI tools that are like non-robotic. <laughs> like a lot of people, they think of AI as like ChatGPT as yeah. like not great yeah. at writing. But we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make it like seem really authentic. And I think that is something that like surprises people. It's actually quite interesting because every company these days, big or small, is now going to claim that they have AI in them. Uh, and so a lot of as we pitch these bigger companies and one of the things that we've seen with these e-commerce brands or D2C brands and now global brands that we're targeting, they've worked with like AI products before, but oftentimes it's like an established enterprise that are like kind of slapping AI on it. Yeah, yeah. And really how we see it is like, how can we build a product experience with AI from the ground up? And so we find that people's like mental model of what AI is, is very different than what's possible because they, they you know, it's, it's the startups out here that are like building from the ground up with AI that like, can truly show like what does a product look like when you when you truly build it with AI, um, versus like you know, ten years of, of legacy code, slap some AI on a front end and and call it a day. Yeah, put a check mark on the We have AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it's actually interesting because like uh, like there look there's a ton of AI stuff out there, and like the biggest question is is like is this useful? Mm -hmm. And like automatically I, I think about like yeah like imagine a brand who's like gone viral mm -hmm. and like you have like even like small like brands like that like go viral get thousands of comments how do you service each and every one and mm -hmm. if you're like even a small to medium sized business like an extra sale is like a lifeline right so mm -hmm. being able to make sure everything's personalized and, and and also for the user too right like if i'm getting a message from a brand and it's just a generic message for something i don't want i probably don't care and i'll probably have like a distasteful look towards the brand right mm -hmm. i like the idea where like the user is happy because they're going to get something that it is at least close to what they'll like and the business also gets uh uh like targeted messages this is why i asked who was the marketer because this is like a a very domain specific problem and a very great solution i mean so the one, one thing that i think is interesting here is i don't AI enables a lot of different things, but you can draw from parallels that already exist. And so as an example, brands are already doing email and SMS marketing yes. all the time. But if you think about like what DM marketing is, it's literally just SMS black, marketing, yeah. but like more conversational in nature and especially targeted more towards like younger generations are, are very much on social. So it's a very, it's like a very natural thing to think like, okay, we have email marketing, we have SMS marketing. DM marketing is just a third avenue for these people. 
And what's great about DM marketing is one, it's on social. So social is like where you can get the most details about people because where they post their lives. And then two, it's very conversational. And AI is built for conversations. It's not built for this like one-time email blast. Like you can really lean into the one-to-one -one personalization on social. So in some ways, like yes, it is a very new paradigm. People are, there are other people trying to do this, um, but it's, it's a huge opportunity. But on the other hand, it's like, it's very similar to what brands are already doing. It's just, you can kind of take that and build it for the modern era um, with all of these AI features like, like laid, layered in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Deals, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, listen, it sounds like you have a very complex back end because I can imagine you have a lot of stuff going on. You probably have multiple instances deployed and all this difficult stuff. Or are you using like a back end as a service? I'd like to know what you're using for your back end. Yeah. As I wear the Convex logo. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, as you can probably guess, uh, I'm using Convex and I'm a very happy customer of Convex. Uh, if you think about like what it takes to make a good product for what we're building. We're getting all of these signals and sources of information from Facebook, from Instagram, whether that's like a comment, a DM, a like, all of these things now have to feed into our system. Mm -hmm. And that's all happening in the back end. So how do we build a really comprehensive, good user experience around this? One, it's a lot of data. Like, especially like even like, you know, eight figure brands, and it's, you get into these global brands, man, they get a lot of social interactions. Yeah. So you need to have a backend that like scales with you. It can handle that workload, queuing things up, not breaking and just like shutting down or getting overloaded. Convex has been a lifesaver for that. We use the Convex workflow component. Uh, even if like we're getting a huge burst of traffic, it really gracefully handles it to like, you know, yeah. queue things up and process them when ready. And for us, like again, it's, it's not, super, super, like all this stuff is happening in the background. So we, we just need robust and like thorough processing of all the jobs that we have done. Convex has been amazing for that. On the user experience front, they want to know when stuff's happening. Yeah. Like they want to see new comments yeah. that are coming in. We have DM threads, like we have an inbox that looks just like the Instagram inbox. And you know, you can see in real time when a user is typing, when a, a response is being drafted, when a user sends a message, Building that type of experience is incredibly difficult yeah. without something like Convex. Because you have to build like a full-fledged messaging solution, which is very hard. I have done, I've done that in my career. Uh, it's not been fun. Um, and even when I built it, it wasn't nearly as reliable as something like yeah. Convex. So Convex gave all of these primitives for us to move really, really quickly and build awesome product experiences that all of our customers have been loving. Bro, he doing my job better than me, man. Like, dang, bro. I'll tell you, dude, you should, you should, you should ask my co-founder. He laughs because I talk about he's not he, he uh, he's not technical. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and he hears me talk about convex so much. He's like, dude, you're just obsessed with them. And I'm like, and I'm like, they're just so good. And I, and I keep telling him like, every single person should be using convex I and agree. starting a company today. And I think like, you know, in, in two years, it, like I said, it's gonna become malpractice to not use something like Convex. No, I'm with you. I literally went from like user to employee just because of how obsessed I was with like how good things are. And like the thing is to your point, like a lot of people will maybe build like a lot of the features Convex has, but as you scale is when you realize, oh man, I didn't really build this properly or this can't handle all this traffic. Where with Convex, like, it's not even a worry for you. And yeah. you get to dump all your time and expertise and user experience. And I also like how you designed the app where it almost feels gamified, where like things are popping up, they're nice colors. And it, and the reason why you're able to do that is because everything's real time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, I'm very excited for people to be convex build. That's what I, we need to do. We need to call it a shirt. We have a, <laughs> need to have a shirt. Convex build. Yeah. Because once you're pilled, you're yeah. just like, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's just such a better experience. And like, again, especially like I can't harp on this enough as like more and more work happens in the background. Like think about our product, right? At any given point for these big brands, we might be having DM combos with lots of different people. And this is, these are just agents running in the background. Could you, like, could you imagine syncing that state between your front end that like your messenger inbox that you have and like all the stuff that's going in the background? Now it's so cool because you can like see the conversations like yeah. happening in real time. Just like the user can see the agent like working on its behalf and just see like, like all these conversations going on. Great for demo perspective, like, but also too for like users to know what's going on. Like they want to be able to like know and feel control over like, look, I'm not just getting like looking at this thing and this, 
a thousand things are being processed in the background and I have no idea what's happening. It's it's just like such a better product experience to build on Convex. And then one other thing which I'll add to here is like we're positioning to sign like, you know, we're working with like more like global brands, like really big brands that get a ton of traffic. And previously in my career, I've built up like things that are like auto scaling or I've tried to like scale our back end up. It's a pain. It costs a lot of money. Yeah. It's a nuisance to maintain. Now I'm just gonna like go to Convex and like guess what? It auto scales. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's there's no additional work on my end to go and handle this customer. So I feel like in these sales calls with these big customers, I feel very confident. Like, look, we can handle your volume yeah. because we are built on very strong foundations. Yeah. And that's just so powerful to me because now I can focus on feature development, building amazing DM campaigns, building out like really robust community features or database features on on like understanding who each customer is yeah. on our end that these that these uh, brands that we're working with really want. And I don't have to worry about the scaling or anything like that. I love that. So what's next, like what's like, what are the next things that we can expect from Blueberry? Yeah, for us, like I said, we're, we're working with and, and positioning to sign and in conversations with a lot of these like major, major brands to bring this one-to-one -one personalized marketing uh, more to the world. And what I would say is DM marketing is, is coming. Uh, people don't realize this, it's cause I see this every day cause I'm in the weeds of, of Meta, but Meta is very clearly positioning DMs as an alternative to emails and SMS. And so every time one of these new channels unlocked, it led to a huge shift in how brands market and to how brands reach yeah. their customers. This is coming for DMs. Yeah. Right now, the biggest shift is on Facebook DMs. It's going to come to Instagram. TikTok is in beta. And so what we're laser focused on in Blueberry is building world-class experiences there for brands to hook in. Because like the whole point of Blueberry is that like mass marketing is going to be like, it's going to feel like a thing of the past and everything can be personalized to the individual person. So what's next for Blueberry is really just nailing that DM conversational experience for our customers. Mm -hmm. We are fundraising. So we actually just kicked off small conversations today. We're presenting at the Parex Demo Day, October 1st, and then uh, running a, a pretty short process right after that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're Thank crushing you. it, man. It's Thank it's you. exciting. Uh, like, <laughs> you do my job, <laughs> bro. Like I said, man, I am I you, I am Team Convex. I I will I will hype it up to to the you know the fullest extent because it truly has been like a, a lifesaver for me. To everybody watching, we did not pay. Him. Did not pay. If to say anything, this, he's a paying customer. Did not pay me to say this. It, I am a paying customer. I have built many products before and not used Convex, and I would be so so sad if I had to go back. Like so sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We appreciate you, man. Yeah. One other thing, which I'll also add um, for anyone watching this, the Convex team is incredible. All of you guys, and then also all of the engineers. I've seen engineers merge bug fixes for features that I request, or like not even bug fixes, it was like new additional work for a feature at like 4 a.m. on a Friday. And I was like, first no, of all, go to crack. sleep. Yeah. No, Second crack. of all, from everyone that I know at Convex and also people that, that know the team, they're like, these are some of the best engineers I've ever seen in my life. So uh, I feel very comfortable that they're in. No, team is <laughs> that, correct. That that's that's the stuff. one thing yeah. I can like confidently guarantee the team is. Yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, we appreciate you, bro. Thank yeah, you so much for coming around. Of course, of course. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you.